Hey yo, it's Guido coming back at you with a tactics talk. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. I have a two pack for you. We are going to do scout tactics and we're going to talk about active scouting first and then I've got an example of passive scouting afterwards. In addition to that, we'll be using the same tank, which will be the T100 LT, a tier 10 Russian light tank. And we will have two different maps. We'll start on Sand River and we'll go over to Malinovka, which is better for the passive kind of idea. So you can see that I've loaded into Sand River on the first one, which will be an active example. It is a tier 10 and tier 9 battle, so a 5-10 battle. There are some RD to deal with, enemy scouts, and the regular suspects of heavies, mediums, and such. So I will head up towards the north. One of the things about deciding, one of the things about deciding whether you're going to be active or passive has a whole lot to do with the map. It has a little bit to do with your team setup but really more with the map. This map is not a great passive map. There are some spots where you can get some long range views, but most of it is open, so it's hard to bush up. In order to passive on this map, you have to do quite a bit of vision games. So I'm gonna come up over here and just take a peek. The Sheridan's there, and I am dodging because I know there are two artillery. I just wanna make it a little difficult. They will presume in that area, and you can see that the T-50 got nailed because he wasn't moving as fast. That's why not a lot of people go up there anymore. There used to be quite a scrum going on there between both sides, actually. But that does not happen much. In fact, what happens a lot now is the middle gets really thick with heavies and people trying to hide from artillery and play punchy face down there in the lane. So down into that pit of doom, as I call it. But we have a good push coming up here. Oh, boy. So there's something you need to watch out for when you're driving a light tank, especially the fast ones. This one's actually got a really wide stance, and I was a bit surprised that I tipped over there. One of the things you will find with the Russian tanks in this game, they call it the hover tank technology. It has to do with their ground resistance and their mobility as far as their ability to track their hole right and left. The Russian tanks can get very squirrely in certain places. So thankfully the Patton hooks me up and he rolls me back over and I am able to continue fighting in this game. Otherwise that would have been a pretty crummy game. I'd have died upside down there. So I'm being active. I come in here. These guys are paying attention to our hard push that kind of came up over top. They're very busy fighting them. I'll shoot the 55 and then I'll back down where I've got cover here. And I'm sort of checking forward too because I know there's a couple tanks, the PTA and the Sheridan. But they're busy shooting at other guys that they have easier shots on. I pile one into him and now we've got the T55A. One thing about this LT100 is the reload is relatively long. It does take a while to reload. Now we have a pretty good advantage on this map when you win this north flank. Let's talk about this map real quick because I think it's really misunderstood quite a bit. You can see that we've got quite a few heavies that want to go down here and play punchy face. Again, they're trying to avoid arty as well as they can. If the Reds come too far around the corner, our Artie hits them. If we go too far around the corner, their Artie hits, hits us, unless their Artie's actually up here. There are some places you can go with Artie to change that fight. But what happens is usually one team or the other wins one flank or the other, or both. In this case, we've won the north flank. But you'll see that a bunch of us are starting to head here towards their cap. That's the wrong answer. There's no need to push the cap because there are probably two to three big TDs or campers sitting on this ridge. And it's very difficult to cross this open area. So you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn around because I need to come back over here and help them down in the pit of doom. Now that we own this flank, there's no reason to push their cap. We are ahead, but it's not like we're going to roll up on their cap and try to start capping when they've got all those defenders. Unfortunately, four of our tanks decide to head that way. So again, still being active, I'm not really going to bush up. I'm just looking for an opportunity to jump in someone's face and start shooting them. Come back here, and there's the aforementioned campers. And that's a critical no damage. Apparently hit his track, I'd imagine. And we'll shoot him again. We'll get it. No, we'll get another track. That time he does track him. Maybe a little more careful shot. I can get some damage. There we go. So he starts backing up. Not really interested in being hit in the side anymore. And our guys that push the cap are getting some work done keeping those guys busy at least. So that makes me feel like now I can actively use the Scouse mobility and come around here. 
Now one thing you have to watch for diving down into this hole is if they own this high ground up here, but you can see that they've pushed through here and there's really not that many tanks left. As a matter of fact, I have a pretty good idea of where all of them are other than the artillery and I have a good guess on him as well. So I know this T-30 is hanging out here. I'll just start shooting him. I look for a track, but I don't quite get it. Try to get into the sprocket. Now I'm going to push in here. And he just starts turning his turret right at the right time. I'm not able to get it into the back of the turret. And I knew those guys were up in the cap. And I figured they would probably be trying to take shots on me right there. Which is interesting because they're completely getting pushed. And then here comes my buddy in the uh, Sheridan. He whacks me. Takes out my engine. I fix it. And now at this point it's just I am doing whatever I can do to try to stay alive. Put my front armor to him. Fix things when it gets damaged. Take shots on him. Try not to get killed. No, 100, don't do it. Oh my gosh, one hit point. Don't let him smash me. And I kill him right before he's able to ram me. And that is just one of those things I talk about a lot in this game. Just keep fighting. Keep maneuvering. Keep looking to live a little while longer. Live until you get that reload. Live until your buddy comes and kills the guy that's threatening you. Live until he makes a mistake and you're able to come out of that and not him. So I'll pop up here, take a shot on him, there he goes, and there goes the last tank. And you'll notice then, so for an active scout in this case, I don't have a whole lot of spotting. I got 962. That's not going to trip any missions, but it, it is a decent amount of spotting, and I did 3,000 damage. So I was active this entire game, and Sand River really is a good active scout map, especially if you get a decent force doing the flanking action like we did up in the north. It can also happen down in the south that you can run rampant all over the, the map, go to where the fires are, help put the fires out, and move on very quickly in an active manner. So let's take the same tank and we'll move on to Malinovka and we'll talk about a much slower paced game and passive scouting. All right, on to the second example on Malinovka for the passive with the same tank, the T100LT. When I named the files on these two games, the first one I named I Will Survive based on that last little scrum at the end where I survive with one hit point. This one I named Just Keep Swimming. Just Keep Swimming. Sometimes you just have to kind of hang out and let things happen and see where it goes. And you will find that with passive in a lot of cases, especially with the positions that you take in passive spots if they're forward. A lot of times you're not able to get away from them. So they are, in a lot of cases, a high risk, high reward kind of spot. Now that's not too bad on this one because I'm a light tank in an all tier 10 battle. It can be more problematic if you are the top tier, say in a 357 and you're a tier 10 light. If you go into a bush and sit through the whole game, the game can really pass you by and you can be a big part of the loss, even though you're spotting a few things here and there. But in a game like this where there's so much beef around, one of the better things I can do is actually lock down certain areas. So I'm going to lock down this kind of middle point here at the edge of this swamp. I can see over here into those buildings. Now there is a bush ahead of me that's actually better. This is probably one of the best passive scouting bushes in the entire game right here because it will light up better guys crossing over here. It also has a better view of what's going on on this little promontory right here as well. But it is harder to get to without being seen. And in an all tier 10 battle with some scouts and mediums running around, it's just really not wise to do that. You can see that that guy was trolling around in the general area, so more than likely I'd have been spotted. So I'll just let this happen. He gets hammered, that's 1100 spotting right there, so pretty good start. Unfortunately, he does get across there. I would have really loved for him to die, but he didn't. And I'm looking at those guys going, come on, are you serious? One of them missed, the other one hit. And he's taking up a pretty good position. And it's going to be hard to dig him out of there right there. And it's going to be hard for me to do anything with him in there as far as moving or shooting. So I've just got to sit here and sit tight and look for the spotting damage here. So more of a passive game. This map, as I mentioned, is more of a passive map. People don't like it for that reason. It's a little bit more difficult to, to play and it doesn't happen very fast a lot of times. Why some people don't like that, I don't know. I enjoy both. I like to rage around in my scouts and blast things. I also like to do a more strategic kind of gameplay like this where I'm locking down a spot. Now if the other team was smart, or smarter, they may be smart, maybe they need to be smarter, 
They might take some shots into some of these bushes, especially if they know they're being lit by things. In the case of the E50M, he may have been lit by the 140 as well over there, so he may not have a good idea of how he's being lit. The guys that are running around in those buildings up there should have a decent idea that there's probably a scout forward somewhere. Sometimes it can be in the bushes. I'll just take control of the camera for a minute while this is going on. Sometimes there can be a scout in there if you're being spotted on the other side. This bush, as I mentioned, the bush I'm in right here, or potentially up on that promontory right there are all positions where scouts can be passively spotting a lot of these places. So I'm seeing the 268, the JPZ E100. Now I don't want to shoot right here, all right? This E50 is getting rocked. He's trying to get up there and take shots on the 140. He's taking hits, but if I shoot, I'm immediately spotted. If you look at my white line right there, which happens to coincide with my green line at this point, based on I've got my binocs cooking, you can see that he's well inside that. I shoot, this bush protection goes away, and I'm immediately spotted. We got rid of their scout, so that's helpful, but I'm still not able to shoot right here, not yet. The C50 needs to go away. If I can get this E50 out of here, I've got some options to potentially take shots in the near future. And there he goes. So that's 2300 spotting. I talk about it a lot. You need to be either assisting damage, facilitating damage, is what I like to call it, or doing damage. So, so far I've facilitated 2300. However, you can see that we're starting to lose up top and things are not going great for the team. We've got a Mouse platoon that's getting kind of pummeled up there. And a lot of it is by the artillery, just throwing shots in. Their 121 is in, on good hit points. He's moved up considerably. Our 121's near dead. And we've got some campers sitting back in the back. Now, interesting there, E100 has taken himself out of the game for the most part. He's down in that southwest corner. So we can pretty much ignore him. As a matter of fact, if one of those heavies or the TD came back across, that would not be a bad idea because it's unlikely that that E100 is going to cross over there. Now, he may feel like he can here in the near future if we lose enough tanks, he may feel like he can push across. The mouse continue to get hit and I am continuing to sit here and lock down this area. Now somewhere in here I probably needed to get moving and do something. The problem is I don't have a lot of places to go. I could go up into the north on the A-line and help sniper shots through there. I don't want to move forward. There's too many guys up in their buildings right there and too many tanks alive on the map. I can't move through the swamp, that's really not going to work. So for the moment, I am also kind of locked down. And that's what I talked about earlier where you got that high risk, high reward spot. Depending on how the game flows, you can actually then be more or less out of position. So I'm not really contributing a whole bunch right here, but I am keeping them honest if they start to try to poke around on this middle ridge that's overlooking the water right there. But it looks like a good portion of their tanks are up there on top. Now this game ends up working out for us in the end. It takes a lot of doing. If I had it to do again, I might actually come out of this bush, turn to the right, and head back towards our cap, and then swing up to where the Leopard and the FV and the Object are, and start helping them sniper shot on those guys up on the hill. But while it was going on, I figured, you know what, these guys are actually doing a pretty good job. Let's just hang out here and see what happens. As a matter of fact, there goes him, and naturally a crit no damage. Lob a shot in here and see if we can get one on him. And I am not spotted. So I felt like, based on where I saw all the tanks, that I probably was going to have an okay time taking a shot and not getting spotted right there. And it turns out that was true. Because I'm counting noses. I know the AX and the Patton are up on the hill. There's the 140. The JPZ in front of me, if he's still there, does not have good spotting. And there was quite a few bushes between me and him anyway. But there goes our last mouse, and now things are getting a little bit grim. And I don't notice this for a while, but you may have. Got a bit of trouble coming up through the swamp there. And that's when I noticed it right there. You see my little double take where I was swinging over to kind of look this way, and then I saw the JPC. <laughs> I thought, oh man. There will come a point when he gets a little bit closer that I won't be able to take any more shots and I'll be spotted. There he is. 
Thought about shooting, but I'm glad I didn't. The 907's doing some good work right there. We've still got the FV. We've got the object back there. We've got the JPZ sitting in the middle. Now their JG is moving up. He's been hit by something. Tracked, looks like. Their 121 is trying to come in, and we've got the IS-7. And all of a sudden, my position is relevant again. So I really didn't have any good places to go. I hung tight. That's the just keep swimming part. Sometimes the best thing you can do is hang tight. That's hard for me to do. It's hard for a lot of people to do because they want to get out there and start getting things done. But I knew that this game was going to develop this way. They were pushing down. Eventually we were going to get guys up on those ridges up there. And all of my snipers are behind me. So falling back and bringing my vision control back towards the snipers was not really going to be helpful. So at this point, all we have to do is try to keep spotting these guys and taking them down as they push. That was unfortunate. The FV got killed. He was doing some good work on him up there. And you can see me swinging my camera around frantically because I need to know where these guys are. I want to know if I'm about to get spotted because this is the critical phase of the game where we can still pull this out, but it is possible for me to get spotted depending on where the enemy tanks go. And if one of them just drives up onto me like this JPZ... I could have serious trouble. So he gets hit. I'm thinking, well, he's gonna once he drives right up, I'm gonna have to go ahead and run away. And I thought he was gonna come right up and over, and he stopped. Thankfully, right there. And he wasn't interested in coming right at me. Alright, let's talk about this now. So I've been talking about, hey, I'm worried about getting spotted. There's a couple ways to handle this situation where spotting is imminent. The first one is to wait till you get lit. The problem with that is you've been lit for three seconds before your sixth sense goes off, and that means you're probably gonna eat a shot. And that kind of loses the initiative. So what I like to do in these situations where I feel like it's time to move, I'm either imminently gonna get spotted or I've just got to move and do something different because my position's about to be compromised. I decide to shoot first and start moving immediately after I shoot to increase the chances that I live. So I saw this 121. I know the JPZ wants to push into me right there. So I choose to just take my shot on him, get my damage. And as soon as I sh hit him, I start moving. He dodges down into the water. And now I know I've got that 268 up there. So I'm just jinking and jiving, hoping he doesn't hit me. One shot from him and one from the JPZ, and it's all over. The JPZ wants to come up, come up. I take a shot, and I do get hit by the 268, the JPZ fires, and now I am down in this kind of no man's land. The problem is I would have loved to keep going, except that there's a 100 over there. What I didn't know is he is well over on the side, so I probably should have kept going right down this alleyway right here. I turn, try to look for some bushes. I think I'm oh so clever. Someone shoots and misses, thank goodness. I must have still been lit there for potato. And boom, just hammered by artillery directly right there. I probably wasn't lit, but I probably wasn't lit for very long by the time he fired that in there. And I was sort of just hanging out in one spot. So unfortunately, I eat a shot I did not want to eat right there. This is an interesting problem right here. If you notice when you're stunned, all of your crew members and stuff are lit up as if they're stunned. They got all the red. The problem is what that does is it masks the fact that one of my crew members was dead. You can see that I lost my... Lost my commander. I'll spit it out in a minute. Take a shot on him. Shot of opportunity. But because I'm busy looking at the at the screen now and not paying attention to what was killed down there, I miss the fact that I don't have a commander. And this hurts us a bit right here because I might have been able to spot something if my commander had not been dead. And it takes me quite a while to notice this. This is not a problem I usually have because I always, after I get hit, check that or listen to the warnings. But because it was a stun situation, it sort of masks the death of the of the commander until the stun graphics go away. And that's just sort of an irritating thing about the way they've done the stun mechanics. So this is a fairly standard late game, oh my gosh, they're pushing us last stand bush to, to scout from. The bad news, of course, is that the enemy team knows about it. And finally, I have fixed my commander 
could have backed out right here and shot the I-7, but I knew if I did that I was going to get spotted, so I just jump into the bush, and that down he goes. I knew he had so many guns back here, I was pretty sure he wasn't going to survive or really light anybody important. So he ends up breaking cover and dying, and I'm looking for this JPZ. I'm hoping he makes a mistake, but I don't see him, and I've got my binocs cooking. And this goes back to the passive, late-game passive capability of tanks. Now, I didn't see anything, but one thing you can do is be careful late game like this where it's a close game and you're just trying to get spots for your team. You can bush up, let your binox cook, and see if anyone's moving around and then move to the next spot. Now, I'm trying to be cautious while I do it on this one. Unfortunately, slash fortunately, I've got an aggressive 907 with me right here and I just want to move from bush to bush that I'm aware of, that I know how to use, and just see if I can carefully find one of these guys come up here, see what we can find. There we go. Didn't need the Binox for that, but I end up spotting him because he's a great big old tank. See him going. I'll shoot that guy, jump into the back here, and down he goes. So now we've taken out the JPZ. Moving up here, and kind of a leapfrog action with the 907. We're almost to the point where you can just go active and start raging around the map and try to find these guys. But those two big TDs I'm a one-shot to both of them. The last thing I want to do is have me and the 907 killed, which are basically our eyes at this point, other than the Leopard, and not be able to spot the TD. So I'm just going to kind of do this carefully. But the 907's already out, way out ahead of me, so I'll let this cook. And I don't stay here very long because there's no purpose to it with the 907 so far forward. i got to get moving and get up there and help that guy. Which sort of makes me laugh. I'm usually the 907. I'm usually the guy way out front. So I did appreciate him being aggressive. He's being a little bit silly because he's kind of sitting out in the open. You'll notice the 263, and this has been that way for a while, is way down there. So it's really just the RD and the other TD that we're dealing with over here. 268 was last seen in this up on the ridge there. So he's probably fallen back. And of course, the artillery is likely to be way down here as well. It might have gone to the hill, so that is one thing in the back of my mind. Also, we're down to two minutes. So this this map, this match has taken a long time. And now the time situation comes in. I've got to get things done here. I don't have time to mess around with this anymore. We're down to the end. Shot's going by me. Oh, there's the 268. Shot on him, back up, and then down he goes. And it's over. 4,420. Took most of the match to do it. That's spotting. 1,495 damage done for a total of 5,800. Almost 5,900. I guess over 5,900. Total between assisted, spotted, and actually done. So just keep swimming. There's a good example then of passive scouting from spot to spot. A big discussion about high risk, high reward spots how you get out of them if you're getting pushed, and so on. I hope this helped you guys. I hope you like what you saw. Make sure you support the channel if you can, and as always, we will see you.